how when you think recovery gear, you think Harbor Freight, right? Well, probably not. But my challenge today was to go to Harbor Freight and try and put together the most complete recovery kit that I could. So we're gonna head into the store and see what we can find to build our recovery kit with. For me, a recovery kit needs to start with the basics and a winch is definitely one of those. And this is the Apex 12,000 pound winch. And this is what I actually have on our Jeep. Now it does come with a really nice sturdy clamp on it although I've replaced mine with a Freedom Winch Line 3.0, but it is really hard to go wrong with the Badland Apex Winch. And it's only $600. So it's a great value for what you get. Strong, powerful, and it does the job, and it has a wireless remote, which I personally really like. Now, if you prefer a steel rope, they have that as well. And actually, it's a little cheaper, but you're adding a lot of weight, and personally, I'm not a fan of steel rope. But if that's for you, you can get the same winch with a steel rope. Now they do have a recovery snatch strap, 30,000 pound braking limit, which should be sufficient for most purposes. My problem is I don't like a snatch strap. They only stretch about 20%. I prefer a nice recovery rope because you get a 30% stretch, which gives you a nice softer pull. And we use a recovery rope all the time. So that's one thing I really wouldn't want to skimp on, but if you had to buy it at Harbor Freight, they do have a product. And coming in at only $67, it's really not a bad purchase. Now in some cases, a winch puller or hand winch is gonna do the job. And considering most of the vehicles we're recovering are in the four to 5,000 pound range, ours is 6,000 pounds, and this is an 8,000 pound capacity, it's capable of doing the job, it's just gonna be a lot more work if you have to do it. But if you're really hurting on budget, it is a cheaper way of doing some recoveries. And they do have a place, but I don't, I don't carry one, I prefer an electric winch. Now their soft shackles actually look pretty nice. They're rated for 47,500 pounds braking strength. So it's a good quality product here, about 9,500 pound rated load. So this is gonna do the job quite well. It's gonna be the equivalent to about a three quarter inch shackle. It's got this nice coating around the base so it can handle some abrasion. I, I think this would actually be a pretty good purchase if you wanted to buy some soft shackles. And we carry a handful of them because they're useful in a number of different situations. Now a snatch block is a very, very useful and probably underrated tool. This allows you to maximize your winch's power by doubling its effective strength using mechanical advantage, but it's also good for changing the direction of a pull if need be. Now, we use them on a fairly regular basis and they're always good to have one or two of them available. Now, if you don't like the big clamp that's on the end of the winch line, if you're getting one of their winches, you can add this aluminum shackle point. It's a good option. It's a little small. It's very handy. And this curve in here makes it easy to add a D shackle into it or hook onto the tow hooks that are on the front of and rear of the Jeeps. Now, Harbor Freight has a really good selection of D shackles or bow shackles, depending on you, which name you prefer. Everything from your ATV size to your Jeep and Toyota type size. This one, the Apex one, this looks really nice. Rated for 18,000 pounds. That is a beefy looking three quarter inch shackle. I wouldn't hesitate to use that. If you have a winch, you need a tree saver or a tree trunk protector strap, as they call it here. And this Badlands one looks pretty nice. It's got some nice coating around the loops. It's four inches wide, so it's gonna really help protect the trees really nice. This is a must have. You do not wanna put your winch line directly around the trees. You wanna use a tree saver. It helps protect the trees from getting damage. This is a must have for anyone who has a winch. Now, they also have these recovery straps. I would not call this a recovery strap. I would call this a tow strap. 
This is made for towing, it's not for recovery. So when you need to get someone towed back down the trail, a tow strap is the right option. They call it a recovery strap. I don't because there's no give to it, but something else you really need to have in your kit. Every once in a while, you're gonna run across a situation where there's really no good way of connecting a recovery rope to a vehicle, but they have a trailer hitch. This hitch mounted D shackle ring could do the job for you. Now this is similar to products that I have from Factor 55, same concept, nice, strong, got a good D ring on it there. Connect to that, put that in your hitch receiver and you're good to go. So this I think is a must have for anyone out there doing recoveries. Now whether it's snow, whether it's sand, sometimes you just need a shovel to get some material out from in front or behind the tires, making your recovery easier. They have this foldable recovery shovel. Something like this could be a useful addition to your kit. Harbor Freight does have their own farm jacks. This is not a tool I recommend for most people. It takes experience, takes some knowledge, takes some skill, takes a lot of practice to know how to use a farm jack properly. Unlike a lot of people believe at the beginning, they are not for changing tires because you have to lift the entire body up and max out all the suspension before you get the tire off the ground. It's much better to use some other tool that's going to lift from the axles and immediately start lifting the tire off the ground. Probably the most overlooked thing in your recovery kit is a good pair of gloves. Whether you're handling steel line, synthetic line, whatever you're doing, you should be wearing gloves. They're very inexpensive here at Harbor Freight. They have a huge selection of them. I really like these hardy uh, goat skins, fit nice, they hold up really well, and they'll do the job. But they have a plethora of different gloves to choose from, including your basic leather gloves, which are like 10 bucks. So get yourself a good set of gloves, and you'll be glad you did. Let's talk about a jack. I told you I don't like using a farm jack. It doesn't do the job. They do have this Badland off-road floor jack. This thing is seriously overkill and it's huge. There's no way I would be putting this thing in the back of my rig for doing recoveries. It's just absolutely massive. It's got a lot of lifting power. It's got a big amount of lift height to it. It's $319. If this is your <laughs> jam, go for it. But for me, this is not something I'm going to carry because it's just way, way too big to be hauling around for changing tires and things. I still think there's better options and they're here at Harbor Freight. Our preferred choice is a bottle jack. You're going to get a lot of lift. They're going to be plenty strong. They don't take up a ton of room. Something like this eight ton jack or the four ton jack is going to do the job. What you need to see is how much room do you have underneath your vehicle so that you can get it underneath the axle, under a shock mount, something where you have the room to make it work. And these have a top that unscrews so you can adjust the working height. I really like that. And these aren't very expensive at all. They don't take up a ton of room. Usually you can throw them in the back somewhere. And Harbor Freights are pretty inexpensive. They're 30, 40, 50 bucks, depending on the size. Just make sure that you size it properly for your vehicle. Nothing is worse than going to change a tire, pulling out your bottle jack and realizing it's too big and you can't get it underneath the vehicle or it's too small and you can't lift up the, the vehicle enough. So make sure you check underneath your vehicle, check to make sure you have the right height and then pick a bottle jack that's appropriate for your vehicle. This is the right way to change a tire when you're out on the trail. Now, I definitely think everyone should have a pair of jumper cables. Way more times than I care to account, I've had to jump a vehicle, whether it just be on a trail, they let their battery die, or around town during the snow, they can't get their vehicle started. Good set of jumper cables 
is really handy. Now this one's only 30 bucks. They got a nice thick wire on them. They're gonna hold up. They're even in a case. I really like them. Um, Harbor Freight does have some little radios. These are FRS radios. They're gonna be good vehicle to vehicle on a trail or a driver to a spotter situation but they use batteries. And I'm not a fan of that. I'd rather have a rechargeable. These cost about 40 bucks. I think you can do better on Amazon. And I'd rather have GMRS that put out a little bit more power, but in a pinch, these are gonna do the job and they are compatible with GMRS radios. Now this should come as no surprise that not all recoveries happen during the day and you may need some extra light. I've been using this guy for a while now. I really like it. They have a magnetic base on them and they've got two models here. One's brighter than the other, but they're rechargeable. They put out a ton of light. Now there's also headlamps, little portable lamps, all kinds of things. Make sure that you have some light options available so that you can do the job in the dark. I'm not a huge fan of their headlamps. They work, but I, I prefer something that's a little smoother and doesn't have such a, a spotlight effect to it. But again, we're building the kit here at Harbor Freight and they have the product right here. Now, one of the last things you'll probably ever think of for a recovery kit is tire chocks. But you'd be surprised how often they come in handy. You don't want a vehicle to roll back on a trail, they're on a hill. You wanna secure that vehicle before you start doing recovery and some tire chocks can definitely come in handy. And they're inexpensive. I, eight bucks here at Harbor Freight. Pick yourself up a set. Now I wouldn't really consider this a recovery kit item, but you need to have a fire extinguisher. Make sure you have one that's rated for autos so that it can put out gas fires and things like that. The typical one for the house is not the right one. Make sure you have the right fire extinguisher. Now this little kit here is super, super handy. These are replacement valve stem cores. You would not believe how many of these I have gone through over the years. Not just myself, but other people. Sometimes a rock just hits a valve stem a little weird and it breaks that valve stem and we've had to replace them on the trail. I have probably gone through a dozen valve stem cores over the last five years. I always keep those in my recovery kit. Now, of course, you need a bag to put all this stuff in. Harbor Freight's got a good selection of bags. The Hercules and the Bauer bags are pretty cool. This Hercules tool kit is kind of nice. You got a lot of room to put stuff in it, the recovery ropes and things, and all these little pockets for all the additional things that you have, both inside and outside pockets. Now I use something more like this, a big Bauer bag, that zipper top, keeps everything closed, keeps all the dirt and muck out of it and it's got a lot of pockets on it. So I prefer a bag like this, and you're gonna be spending between 40 and $50 on a good bag here at Harbor Freight, but well worth it. You gotta keep your stuff organized, and this is a good option. Ratchet straps. Yeah, this is another one a lot of people don't think of, but we have had to use ratchet straps in recoveries multiple times. We actually had to ratchet strap a high lift jack to the side of a Jeep to keep their wheel and axle from falling off once. They come in handy every once in a while. Sometimes you need to just ratchet things up out of place to, to tow someone out of a trail. A good set of ratchet straps is important, but make sure you check the rating. You don't want the cheap ones that are only rated for 100 pounds. These have a good rating on them. Over here, they have some cheap ones, 13, 14 bucks, but you can see the rating is pretty low on them. We want something that's gonna be a lot stronger. So this set over here, I think is a good buy and they are pretty inexpensive. Of course, you can get bigger ones, but they're bigger and size and usefulness is definitely an issue. But this middle of the ground one, I think this is a great bet. Now, I don't know about you, but when I'm having to crawl under a vehicle to attach things, I want something to lay on. And Harbor Freight has these super, super thin moving blankets. They're only five bucks. They got a good size. They're great to throw down. And if you really mess one up and get it covered in oil, call it disposable because it's only five bucks. 
but being able to lay on something besides bare ground, especially in mud and snow, well worth that investment. Well, that's my take on recovery gear at Harbor Freight. If you have some favorites, be sure and put them in the comments below so we can check them out ourselves. Thanks for watching. Be safe out there. We'll see you on the trails.